Welcome to the Grow My Cleaning Company podcast with your host, Mike Campion. If you are passionate about the cleaning industry, you are in the right place. Love what you hear? Spread the word and tell the cleaning world this is the place to be. Want more? Check out www.growmycleaningcompany.com for free online video trainings, free ebook downloads, free blog posts, and of course, all the podcast episodes. Everything you need to grow your cleaning company is at www.growmycleaningcompany.com. And now, on with the show. Welcome to the Grow My Cleaning Company podcast, where I coach owners of cleaning companies every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday on anything and everything related to building and growing cleaning companies. If that's you and you are committed to growing your cleaning company, check out growmycleaningcompany.com. You will find everything you need to create the cleaning company you have always wanted. If you'd like to be a guest on the show, you can email our producer, Natalie, at nat, N-A-T, at growmycleaningcompany.com, or give us a call with any feedback you've got, 480-648-5149. We are always excited to hear from you, Cleaning Nation. Today, we are chatting with Paul Bodine from LA Maids. LA serves the Los Angeles area with residential and commercial cleaning services. If you want to reach out to Paul and his team, you can get a hold of them at lamaids.us. Paul, welcome to the show. Say hello to Cleaning Nation. Hello, Cleaning Nation. Thank you, Mike. So glad to have you on the show. And I was hoping to start right off the bat with getting a little, uh, you, you told me a little bit about your business model, which is kind of different than what we're used to having. I would love for you to introduce kind of what you do and how you do it to Cleaning Nation. Then we'll jump into the regular show. Sure. Yeah, it's pretty common in uh, where we do business in Southern California. But I know in, in certain parts of the country, or maybe many parts of the country, it's not quite as uh, uh, common, but we're basically a referral agency. And so what that means really is we don't have employees working for us. We work with independent contractors. And um, so our job is essentially just a marketing arm for these folks. Um, but we do, we do a lot of the communications, a lot of the handholding with the customers. But essentially the, the, um, the cleaning crews are independent contractors. So we're, uh, we don't have any way to direct them or we're legally within the state of California. I don't know how it works in different other states, but uh, we can't really direct their cleaning processes or tell them what products to use or equipment to use. They're pretty much on their own. Um, but we can we work that to our advantage in terms of making it more of a customized service. And you know, our responsibility is really matching uh, our customers' needs with the right crew, since each crew has their different own own ways of doing things. Yeah. So how did you get into that business? Well, uh, in the cleaning business in general or in the, the referral agency specifically? Both. Well, the cleaning business, my wife had some experience in it on the janitorial side. She'd, she'd run some janitorial businesses in the past in addition to some other businesses. I had never really owned a business before. I'd kind of grew up and worked in corporate America all my life. And uh, when I finally couldn't take that anymore after about 35 years, um, we decided to open up this company. And we actually started as a, as a traditional uh, cleaning business with employees and um, wasn't too long before we decided we thought we might have a, a better uh, better way of going if we went the referral agency route. And um, in terms of that type of business, I had some experience in that work of, of, of staffing um, through my experience with Robert Half International, which is a pretty large uh, staffing agency um, here in the United States. So had some background in that kind of a business model and applied it to cleaning and we switched from having employees and started hiring independent contractors. Cool. So it sounds like you kind of combined your wife's experience with uh, the cleaning industry and your experience with the staffing industry and came up with a hybrid. Absolutely. Absolutely. And so she's, you know, pretty much on the operations side of the business and I'm on the sales and marketing since that that was my um, experience in corporate America for years. Cool. Yeah. I've had people on the show and I'm familiar with uh, like a franchise model where it sounds like so bad, a little a little more formal uh, in terms of a relationship between the cleaner and the, and and the customer than what you've got. But I love your take on that. All right, so uh, gosh, let's just jump right in. How can I help you today? Well, um, one of the things that's the, kind of the thing that's foremost on my mind right now, and on a daily basis, we're struggling with um, having the contractors just report their status. Um, so that we can plan their schedule so that we can, if, if we get calls for them and they've got open time on their schedule, that we can make sure we can tell the, tell the customers what time they're going to be able to arrive. 
that we're able to charge the customers accurately based on how long they're going to be there and what they, you know, what they quoted the customer. Um, Cause that may change. I mean, we may make, take a new customer and estimate a particular job and they get there and it's less or more. We need to know that information so that we can charge. We need to know that information so we can schedule the rest of their day correctly. And uh, it's just a challenge to get, to get them to communicate. We have different ways they can do that through text or through an online application that they can, um, access through their smartphones and uh, an app on their smartphones but uh, or they can just call the office but uh, you know even though they've got those multiple ways of communicating with us a lot of times they just don't so we're kind of find ourselves flying in the in the dark often because we don't have uh, communication from the field okay uh, that's a great question and I think um, even though cleaning nation may not have that exact same pain uh, I'm sure there's no matter your business model there's kind of that there's always going to be that friction between I want my employees to do X or conduct themselves in Y and their human nature is maybe a little lazier, or maybe a little I'm not interested in that or there's not a, they don't see the value for them. So they want to do their own thing. And that creates tension, whether it's a franchisee, an employee, a subcontractor or your spouse for crying out loud. Uh, so let's jump into that and hopefully we give some value not just to you, but to Cleaning Nation. First of all, do you have, and this is a little trickier with what you've got. I'm a big fan and uh, proponent of core values and having really clear core values of, of the rules that you play by and the things that are important to you and, and that guide how you do business. Have you spent any time uh, creating or discovering your own personal core values? Uh, yes. It's in terms of personal and business-wise, yes, we have. Perfect. Yeah. Um, are you, is that something you're willing to share? Um, well, sure. Well, sure. Um, I mean, I, I, I think at the core is is to provide value to uh, to our customer base and to our uh, and to our workers. In this case, our, our independent contractors, um, to create an environment where they can um, develop themselves as much as possible within their own uh, goals for their lives, and also to provide maximum value for the price to um, to our customers. So, I mean, those are those are things that kind of drive us. Okay. And we're, I promise we're going to get to your, there's, I'm, I almost always start with a philosophical answer and then get down to the tactical, sure. but the tactical doesn't often make sense unless we've got oh. the same philosophical foundation to jump off of. So first of all, I, I want to encourage you, if you've got core values, they need to be tight. So for me, and if you've listened to the show at all, you've heard me say, have fun, make money, be real, help out. Uh, I can say them wrote, I can say them in my sleep. You can talk to someone that was employed with me five years ago and go, hey, when you worked with Mike, what was your, whatever company you worked with them under, what was, what was the core values of that company? And they'll go, have fun, make money, be real, help out. Um, so there's no, well, I think it was kind of, sort of, and it's not a whole sentence or paragraph or page. It's have fun, make money, be real, help out. So I would encourage you to really distill those down and get it so I could, anyone could walk up to any of your uh not just uh, contractors, but vendors or bankers or uh, the people that you work for, your clients, and they'd go, oh, yeah, LA cleaners, they're all about bop, 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 bop. So it's real clear and there's no... Because what you just said, I have a feeling if I asked you that a month from now, you would describe them in a very different way and I might get a different thing. And then that's, that, that's, that's tough. You want everyone to be on the same, have fun, make money, be real, help out uh, for you. Obviously, I'm not saying you need to adopt my core values, but where they're very, very clear. So when you've got that foundation, ideally, when you go out to the marketplace to look for either clients or prospective employees, you're going out with those core values way out in front. So two things are going to happen, and they're both pretty magical and will help. I promise we're going to get to the problem that you asked about uh, in a more direct line. But when you get to those, or when you start, when you go out with that message and that who you are, you're going to do two things, both of which are beneficial. First, people that aren't into what you're talking about. Let's just say personal development. I kind of heard a little bit of a theme. People that aren't into personal development, they're like, listen, man, I just want a paycheck. I don't need any of this nonsense. Um, they're going to steer clear of your organization, which is fantastic. Now, the other people that align clearly with your core values. And that's why it's so important that you're clear with them, right? Because they have to align with your actual core values, not what they thought that you might have said on a certain day, depending on your attitude or your mood or, or how you're feeling that day. Um, but they actually align. They hear, and I'm going to use mine because I'm familiar with them, but have fun at work. Wow, that sounds like a really cool thing. Be real. I've always felt like I had a mask up and I don't want to have a mask up. And look at this, the guy that I talked to, whether it's Mike or my supervisor or my coworker, if we go to, to dinner outside of this or we're in a good situation or a bad situation, they're the exact same person. I love that. I'm really attracted to that. So you're going to repel people that don't share your core values and you're going to really be a magnet for people that do. 
which is awesome because I'm guessing if you're like most of us in this industry, you're dealing with near minimum wage folks, maybe a little higher in LA, but still kind of living wage type people. Uh, and the problem with those people are they've had a bunch of jobs and they've probably been kicked around a lot. And just like we sometimes see them as a commodity, they see us as a commodity. So if and when you get to be quote unquote a hassle or a headache, or you start asking to do a bunch of paperwork they're not interested in, um, easy for them to fly off and go, forget it. I'm just going to get another job. But when you got the shared core values that you've attracted them to, and they feel like they're part of something bigger, they're going to take a second pause and go, you know what? I can't. Maybe I can get that $12.50 an hour, whatever your rate is somewhere else, but I can't get this community and this feeling and this core values. And I'm probably going to get a boss that doesn't share them. And it builds a community and it builds uh, people sticking around longer. So that said, if your core value is, like, um, again, is to be personal development, it is reasonable for you to expect people to fill out the paperwork and um, keep you in the loop because they want to make sure... I'm, I'm guessing the core values that you have, people that shared those core values would be interested and willing in filling out that paperwork. So the hardest job in the world is to try and get somebody that's not into personal development, if that's one of your core values, and try and convince them of the value of personal development. That's, that's a fool's errand. It's expensive, it's time consuming, and it will suck the life force out of you. But one of the most encouraging jobs that you can do is take someone that's really into self-development and encourage and, and stoke that fire and help them, uh, help them achieve what they already want. So long story short, all that to say, it took seven and a half minutes to explain. Uh, you want to attract the people that are going to be open to your message already. If the people that you've got aren't open to it, all the tactics I'm going to give you aren't going to work. You need to replace the people that aren't open to it to people that are open to it to make your life a lot easier. So that's the big foundation. Any questions or comments or rude remarks before we go on? Uh, I would just make the comment that I, I could have, couldn't agree more with what you're saying. Is it's uh, you know in my um, kind of research into how you know into into staffing is a lot about hiring, and and you're right. You got to have the right people up front with those values up front, or you're going to be struggling, um, you know, the whole time because they're just going to you know they're they're going to be fighting it the whole time. They're going to might pay lip lip service to what you're saying, but their heart's not going to be in it. Yeah, and even if you bully them into doing it, your life sucks. It's just I've done that. It's it's not a fun place. And then the people that did show up uh, because they did resonate with your core values, they're gonna look over and go, "Oh, this is just another job. I thought this was I thought this was a real special opportunity in place, but it looks like that isn't really the core values because they're not carrying them out with everybody. So it 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 can really hurt. All right, now that we've got a good philosophical foundation laid, let's do a little tactical before we hit the lightning round. But a couple tactical ways you can do that is, first of all, uh, sounds like, and we don't need to get into technology or the application that you use. It sounds like you've got a technological back, 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 backbone running your system. If it doesn't have a GPS component, I would add that. That way, there's no, that eliminates all the call in and this and that. You know where they were. Uh, and I know there are systems out there, and I don't want to promote anyone, but I know there are systems out there that talk about or that have that integration where they've got a GPS and it can just clock in where they are, when they are, and you don't have to worry about, uh, where they're at. Uh, second of all, I found, uh, again, this really works supercharged with all employees uh, or really is supercharged with employees that line up with your core values. But uh, when you don't have that or when you do, this, this, still, this still works to a degree, is people will do what you pay them to do exactly. So I don't like having the rules set up where it is beholden on me or the management team to arm wrestle and beg and plead and, and there's this tension, I kind of, I realize I get to set all the rules for this, this whole game, right? If anything exists because this is my company, it is because I created it. And if I am begging or pleading or arm wrestling or cajoling my employees, well, that's because I've set up a, a system that uh, requires me or my management staff to do that. So I, well, who's the idiot that set up the system? Well, that was me. Well, why don't I, you know, get some brains and set up a different system? So I, I found that people are motivated by pay. Um, so instead of begging and pleading, I would set it up where if you would like to get paid, these are the, the things that need to happen. And if they don't happen, that's no problem for us. Uh, we just can't or don't process your pay. I found when you do that, magically, they get really creative in terms of, oh my gosh, I will fill up my paperwork and it will be done correctly. Do you have any sort of tie between them uh, doing what they need to do in terms of communication and getting their paycheck? Um, it's more specific to making sure that the paperwork is in so we actually even know what to pay them and making sure that um, that they make their deposits of any checks or cash that they pick up, um, that those deposits have to be made before obviously they can get their check. But tied back to this particular issue, no, um, we, haven't, uh, we haven't used that, that issue to force, force the issue. 
Well, okay. the cool thing is you're not bullying them or like, I'll teach you a lesson. You're just putting the, 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 the weight of this problem where it belongs. You're taking that into you and your management staff and it shouldn't be there. It's not your job. So you're not saying, ha ha, I'm going to teach you a lesson, you dirty employee. You're saying, man, if you, if you're aware of our core values, and again, you always got to tie it back to the core values. If you're aware of our core values, it's, you know, being on top of crap or whatever your thing is. And we really want to make sure that your pay is correct, but because we didn't know where you were or what you did or how you were available, um, we couldn't pay you. So, you know, and, and the problem is now, if you fill out the paperwork, you're going to have to wait to get that paycheck till the next paycheck. And I know it can seem punitive and I know people can get pissy about it and maybe even lose some people, but sometimes you got to lose a couple battles to win the war. So that would be the first thing I would do is tie pay to it, not to be a jerk or to be punitive, just to go, folks, I need good data to pay you. I'm not going to make it up. I'm not going to guess. I'm not going to beg. I'm not going to come to your home and say, please, please, Susan, how many hours did you work today? Either you turn in your paperwork and it's correct and we process your pay or you don't and we can't. And we're not going to steal your money, of course. You'll just have to, we can't process your pay until you've given us the information. Uh, and if you give it after this, in whatever pay period you give us the information, that is the pay period. We will we'll pay it. That's all there is to it. Um, the flip side is I'm a huge fan of not just the carrot, but the stick. And I hate to say it, but money and recognition are really the two things that people, people go to. So you want to make sure you're not just having the stick with, if you don't comply, we cannot process pay. Um, and again, don't, you can't beg them as soon as you, even if they do it, as soon as you call or ask or say, Hey Susie, or remind them the, the jig is up. You've got to do zero things and have them come to you and go, Paul, wh wh where's, I didn't get my paycheck this week. You go, Oh, that seems odd. Let's, let's find out what happened. Oh, well, I haven't turned, I haven't got any hours. You didn't do A, B, or C. So we weren't able to process it. What the hell, Paul? You always remind, where's my reminder? Where's my, where's my begging? Where's my, you go, oh, we don't do that. So um, really that's what you got to do is tie your, the, the pay to their specific behavior. And then the flip side is you want to give rewards and recognition for the people that do a really good job and exemplify that in front of other people. So that would be the two tactical things is make sure you reward and recognize the people that are doing it well and make sure that when they don't do their job, the system makes it a headache in their world as opposed to right now, the system makes it a headache in your world. Um, and as long as that's the system that you're all working with, this problem will not change. Uh, okay, so I've run a little bit long. I want to get to the lightning round, but before we do, uh, I want to make sure I answered your questions. I didn't create 100 other questions. Anything else you need before we hit the lightning round? I think uh, you give me enough to think about right there. Okay, cool. Uh, well, in that case, let's do the lightning round. This will give you the opportunity to give back to Cleaning Nation. Three quick questions. I have full faith you're going to give three amazing answers. Question number one, what is the best piece of advice you have ever received? Well, I think um, the, <laughs> one of the best pieces of advice, I don't know if it's the best, but one of the best pieces of uh, advice I received was from my, my uncle, who's been in business for many years. I, As I mentioned to you, I've been in corporate America, so never really ran my own business. And one of the things he said was, don't ever mess, don't mess with payroll. Get yourself a payroll company and uh, let them handle it. And I had been, I started the first couple of years of the, probably two or three years of the business trying to do all the payroll myself and uh, you know, handling, handing it off to a, a professional company who handles all that. It's been a big, uh, big help for me, a big, big weight off my mind. So that's one, one good piece of advice I got. Yeah, that is solid. Not only is it solid, but I don't think, uh, A, that's a great piece of advice. And B, I don't think we've had that on the show before, which is odd because it's, it's really solid. And I, I think I learned that lesson early on. I never try to do it in-house, but yeah, you're not kidding. One fee or late thing or screw up from the government can pay for your entire payroll company for a year. So here, here, Paul Bowden. All right. Or Bodine, sorry. Biggest mistake you've made in the cleaning business. Maybe you can save us some steps or headache. Yeah, I think the biggest mistake uh, is in my my choice of uh, of cutting people loose. Um, we, in retrospect, you know, we have some certain rules we set up in terms of things that, that that need to be complied to, and one of our big issues. I don't know if it's probably the same all in in companies that have employees as well, but um, uh, you know. The crews that decide to go freelance and, you know, they get offered all the time. They get offered, hey, you know, come to work for me directly. You don't need to pay the company fee. Sure. And so we were pretty strict on basically letting people go if we found out that they had uh, succumbed to that temptation. And uh, looking back on it, we let go of some pretty good crews. Um, and we probably should have worked with them a little bit more. Um, because I think it, it probably hurt the company more losing them than the little bit of business that they might have been pilfering on the side. So I would say that's probably the biggest mistake that 
we've made so far. Okay. And I, man, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, I can't help myself with the coach you, but I just want to say one quick thing and throw it in there. I would really encourage you, Paul, to tie that back to the core values. Um, like for, for me and my companies, we have the, you know, help out, have, be real, have fun, help out, be real, make money um, in no particular order with the core values. But an underlying thing, which everybody knew right off the bat, I didn't have it as a core value because I thought it was just table stakes to work for us, was if you ever lie, cheat, or steal, you're, you're fired. Period. End of sentence. We No lying, no cheating, no stealing ever. From us, from the company, from each other, we do not employ liars, cheaters, or thieves. And never had a problem with that. We attracted the right people. And for me, I'm not saying this would be for you. I just want to make sure, mostly for Cleaning Nation... You've always got to go with your core values first. So if you had a core value of integrity, I I can't see a possible way of you letting anyone stay that didn't show high integrity in any regard. So I'm not saying those are your core values or that's important to you. I'm just saying make sure that's a big one. To, that's a big philosophical stance. And I would tie it to your core values, not just to had we kept them around, it would have made us more dollars than had we left them. Again, sometimes there's an un, unintended consequence to actions that we don't see. So I just encourage you to make sure you tie hiring and firing to core values a thousand percent. Sorry to keep beating that drum. It's just so damn important. All right. Last question. What's one idea Cleaning Nation can put into practice that will make their business or their lives better? Okay. I, I'll take that in consideration. Yeah, cool. And again, that's that was, again, not, not to say that right, wrong, or indifferent. Just as long as it's tied to the core values, you're safe. That said, last question, what's one idea Cleaning Nation can put into practice that will make their business or their lives better? Well, I think this is one concept that uh, would help both in our, just our personal lives and in our, certainly in our business. And that is just to um, try to create a culture of trust where you're not, uh, uh, you're, you're kind of your first, um, uh, uh, you know, your first, uh, um, Impression would be to extend trust to your workers and tr trust to your customers. And uh, of course, there's going to be times when they let you down, but um, I think that to be the to be proactive with that trust creates a better environment all the way around. And you can kind of weed out the the customers that are not um, worthy of that trust or the workers who aren't, and uh, move on with the ones that are and have a better overall uh, environment to work in. Gosh, I could not agree more, Paul. Whether it's in a marriage or if uh, parent-child relationship or employee-employer relationship, I have found, I mean, the science backs it up, but I have personally found that the more trust that you give, the more people step up to that. And are you going to get let down? Absolutely. But the overwhelming result is going to be trustworthiness. So that is that is probably some of the most insightful lightning round genius we have gotten. The award for this week goes to Paul. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for sharing your passion and your desire to grow. I truly appreciate you. I know that Cleaning Nation appreciates you. If you want to check out Paul's show notes page and get everything you need to grow your cleaning company, it's at growmycleaningcompany.com. You can leave your questions, your comments, your rude remarks. I will see you there. Congratulations. You are now 16% smarter. Still can't get enough cleaning goodness? Go to www.growmycleaningcompany.com for more of the good stuff. Ever want to be rich and famous? Owners of cleaning companies as well as industry experts can apply to be featured on the show by emailing our producer Natalie at support at growmycleaningcompany.com. Until then, don't miss out on all the latest cleaning industry loving at www.growmycleaningcompany.com. Check it out now.